to kick us off, uh, introduce ourselves and uh, Evelyn, uh, just tell us a little bit about who you are and why you're interested in politics. Hi, um, I'm Evelyn Abaya Isa. I'm originally from Ghana. I live in Boxborough, Massachusetts. I actually um, ran for school committee um, a few years ago. I just got off the seat the last year. I spent three years on the school committee. And the reason why I got engaged civically at the local level was because I realized that at the local level, there was nobody that represented me or my children, particularly in the school district. And the policies that they were making did not really um, how do I say it? it? Did not dovetail with what our vision was for our children, and so I decided and I made a conscious effort to be part of that decision making structure and to have a seat at the table to be able to make decisions that that impacted children, black and brown children in our community. Thank you, Evelyn and Vicky. Um, I'm Vicky Griffith, I'm originally from Kenya. Um, I live in Braintree. I work in the public school system. I have been on the CPAC board. Just like Evelyn said, I try to be that representation in the school system. Um, working in the school system too, my son went through the whole school system and never had a teacher who looked like him. So I try to be in the lower levels where they can, kids as they're coming in can see more representation. Um, I have always loved politics. This is, um, this year just having a woman running has just, she was the person that I wanted when she first announced. And I was disappointed when she kind of had to let go. So this time around, I am just ready to just go go at it. I'm just very, very excited because she's been my number one person, just knowing her life story, being an immigrant, just, you know, immigrant family, just like us. It's just nice to see where she's gotten to. Excellent. And uh, Maureen just joined us. Maureen was, uh, is co-organizing this with me. Uh, Maureen, could you, do you mind turning on your video? and uh, introducing yourself. Okay. I'm seeing things from another angle. <laughs> Sorry if you see me going in and out. All right. Hi, my name is Maureen and um, I'm the community chairperson of Uganda Boston Community Association. I'm very happy to be here. I need to go through different chat groups, remind people that the time is now, <laughs> as our Ugandan community is. I'm happy to see uh, Vicky, who I don't know, but I've heard about. And then also, oh God, my camera, Evelyn. So let me let me do my rounds and then as you guys are talking and then I'll be back. All right, thank you. And uh... My, my, I don't know, Evelyn, we haven't met. Uh, I mean, not Evelyn, Vicky, <laughs> I beg your pardon. This is like my third back-to-back -back Zoom today. <laughs> so anyway, my name is Vivian Kofsinger Birchall. I run for state representative in 2022 because again, I, in our district, we we have never, we had never had anybody of color, let alone black, <laughs> run for this district. So I said, you know what? I'm stepping up and come and buy and buy it. Whatever happens, I'm stepping up. So at least they know we are around. We have a voice and we can actually influence policy. So uh, it didn't work out, but at least, uh, you know, we, we made, uh, I, I'm so proud of the campaign because we made a statement that we are here and we can play a role if given the opportunity to shape policy. And we're still shaping policy. It doesn't necessarily have to be in the state house. And that's why I create, I uh, 
came up with this idea for this information session because during that process of running for office, one of the things that kind of uh, ticked me off was the limited engagement of the African diaspora. It's like we're many. In Massachusetts, we are we make up a large percentage of the population, but we were not there. And not just for my comp my campaign, but in politics in general. And so I decided, you know, I thought to myself about how best can I be a part of changing this? And part of it is just creating these info sessions to chat about the challenges we face uh, in terms of, of what keeps us away from these spaces. Is it time? Is it this? And part of this conversation is part of research that we can we can do, and then find some solutions because it's one thing talking about you know, the challenges, but it's the other thing uh, uh, coming up with solutions and plans of action. And uh, we are hoping, of course, to as part of this series to also talk about the upcoming elections. We have a primary on September third. But many of our people don't even know who is running in the primaries. Thankfully, in Massachusetts, many of the primary seats are going uncontested. Uh, I don't know that it's a good or bad thing. It's <laughs> it's an easy thing, I guess. But uh, we need, of course, many of these seats challenged because that's how democracy works best. But you know, to in the interest of engaging uh, our diaspora, part of the vision was to at least talk about how to make sure that people's vo votes, uh, how to make sure that people vote. First is registering to vote and knowing who the candidates are and, and learning about the different, uh, the different platforms of the different candidates because uh, different candidates have different issues. And as the African diaspora, we have issues that, you know, that we care about that oftentimes are not, you know, are not presented in a way that could shape policy. So uh, that's just an overview of why this came about. This is hopefully going to be uh, the start of many uh, conversations. But uh, maybe to kick it off, we'll just say what maybe for with Vicky, what has been your experience? I know that uh, Evelyn just said, "Be right back." As we wait for uh, Evelyn. What has been your experience with politics or policy? You talked about your school committees and engaging with the school administration. What has that been like for you? What has kept you from engaging more? And yeah, let's start there. Um, I feel like it, it has been a good experience um, because I've come in as a parent and then now like being more involved, I try to make sure that I understand the town that I live in and what local politics is happening here and be more engaged in it. Um, because if you're not getting engaged, then you don't know what's happening. So I try to be a little more involved and then I talk to other people. But again, uh, most of our people, unless they have one or two issues that they're interested in, then they won't, participate so um i feel it's more the engagement of just knowing that if they understood what was going on instead of saying i don't um i don't like the town i live in um you can do something to to be engaged to make that difference yeah thank you thank you and uh I don't know, Evelyn, whether you had the prompting uh, question, but what would you please share with us your experience with, uh, first of all, uh, sorry, I, I'm just letting people in as uh, as we talk. Uh, you have run for school committee. Uh, may, that's a seat that not many of our diaspora think of. Uh, many of our diaspora do not actually I think that uh, local elections matter, but you know that they do and that's why you run. Would you please share with us your experience, why you chose to run? What were some of the things you learned along the process of even just running for office? And then uh, when you got to office, 
what you experience that could help our diaspora um, get off our butts and get engaged. So as I said in my introduction, the reason why I learned for, I ran for school committee um, was one because I didn't think that the policies that my school district were putting forward really um, supported the growth and development of my children in, in this district. And so my kids had experienced different levels of discrimination, whether that was um, vandalizing their lockers, whether that meant calling them the N-word, or even when my kids played all white sports like ice hockey, they experienced different levels of discrimination. And anytime that I went and complained, I didn't see any policy that supported um, people like me and my children. And so um, my intent was really, and I didn't know anything about school committee. I didn't know anything about policy formation and policy development, but I wanted to, I knew there was something fundamentally wrong. I didn't know what it was. Um, I didn't know how I was gonna help, but I said that, well, the only way I'm gonna really figure out what is going on is to go and sit there and understand what was going on. And as I dug through, um, I realized that the discipline policies were lopsided against black and brown people, black and brown children, that the black and brown children were historically failing in our school district, although we lived in a school district that was high performing and one of the best in Massachusetts, that policies like our lunch policies and even our instructional policies did not support our kids. And so um, one of the, 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 the reasons, I, I mean, I, I think that although I didn't know what I was getting myself into, I had this kind of intuition that I needed to sort of get under the hood, under the tent to really understand what was going on. And not that my kids, I mean, my kids experienced different variations of discrimination, but I really didn't even know what I was going to uncover. But I would say in short that the takeaway from all of this is that policies that actually impact us as humans and as people of color are usually originated from the local level and permeate all the way to the federal level, right? So if you even think about school districts, for instance, you may think, well, what kind of policy can a school district put forward that will be so impactful? That is not a federal policy. But I sat on the policy committee and I made a conscious effort to not run for any sort of office in the school. I didn't want to be chair or vice chair because I wanted to have a voice at the table and speak freely. But I sat on the policy committee because somebody had advised me that the policy committee is where all these structural racism, institutional racism get formulated and entrenched in the district. And, and so you would learn that you know, even something like lunch, payment of lunch, free lunches, right? That um, there are policies like a kid who has a low balance cannot get lunch and that they can get a sandwich, but they cannot get lunch. Or the lunch lady sort of just tells the kid, oh, you can get lunch because your balance is low, embarrass the kids. Instead of taking it up, with the kid's parents and feeding the kid lunch. There's so many reasons why a kid's balance may be low. It's not always down to affordability. It could be that the lunch, the, the car that is tied to their lunch account has been discontinued. It could be that um, their, their card got lost and they they turned it off. It's an, a variation of, you know, the card has expired and they have a new card and everybody knows that you have to go through different portions of your life to update your card when your card expires and you get a new card and, and the school lunch is probably the last thing that's on your mind and so a kid should not be embarrassed. And then when you talk about performance in the school district, why are our kids not graduating? This impacts 
generations, right? And so if your kid is not graduation at the top of their class, if they are not treated well in school, it, it affects their performance, it affects their self-image, it affects their mental health, and so on and so on. And so these were things that I started to uncover and I started to think about how are we structuring our lessons? Why are the black and brown kids failing? How are we treating kids that come in with a second language, like English is not their first language? How are we treating kids that are immigrants? How are we treating kids that are coming in as refugees? Is there a stereotype there that they just don't know? And then in our school district, for instance, there was something we called leveling. So if you came in and you didn't speak English and they put you in a low level English, there was no way for you when you improved your English to actually grow and get the opportunity to get into honors. And so these were barriers that I, I began to realize and started to break those barriers down. And so what I often tell people like me immigrant communities like me, people of color like me, is that if we leave it to people that don't know the pain points that we have, the policies will never support our children. And these policies are important because if your kid drops out of high school, it means they're not getting into college. It means they're gonna get a low level, low paying job. And it's a ripple effect of things that happen at the grassroots level. I'll give you an example. Somebody said, I asked a question in our school district when you are in a high school and you start driving, you pay $200 to park. I had question, I questioned where that $200 was going. Why do we pay taxes in our district? And why are our kids paying $200 a year to be able to park in the school? And somebody's response to me was, well, if you can buy your kid a Mercedes or a BMW to drive to school, $200 a year should not be a big deal. And I said, no. Interestingly, not everybody in our district is giving their kid a BMW to drive to school. So you see the mindset, $200 to somebody is nothing. But I know $200 to a lot of people in our community is something. And it's not even the black and brown community. I'm not saying that we are the poor people. There are Caucasian families in our school district that can come up with $200. It's not that easy for them to get it. And so, but people who are making, who are running for school committee, are in an economic bracket that they're not even thinking about it. They don't think lunch is a problem. They don't think parking is a problem. They don't realize that it's not everybody that can take their kids to Russian math to learn math before they come to school to study. And so when the kid is failing in math, it's not comprehending math because the teacher is teaching at a higher level and I don't have the money to take my kids to Russian math to learn before they come to school. And in fact, school should not be, you go and learn and come back to school. My kids should have to come and learn the basics in school. And so somebody needs to say, well, I don't have the money to take my kid to Russian math. And I expect you as the instructor to teach my kid the basics that these kids are going to learn at Russian math so they can be at level with the kids that are going to Russian math. But if you are not on the table and you are not sitting at the table, you cannot be able to, to fight this structure. And these are structural policies and and, and regulations that are put in place to disenfranchise people who cannot pay to be at that level. And so these are the important factors. I and, and it's not every black and brown person that even gets it. The person that replaced my seat, we, when I was a school committee member, we ended up making lunch free. And at the school committee recently, I think last year when they were talking about oh, um, we should approve free lunches again for people. She said, why should kids get free lunch? Why should people be living in a million dollar houses and be asking for free lunch? And she's a brown person and she didn't even get it that there are kids in our community, including white kids that can even pay that $2.50 to eat lunch. <clears throat> and so I'm saying all this, I know it's a long winded answer, but I'm passionate about local politics because that's where the agenda gets set. And that's how people rise to become, they go from school committee to become select board members, to run for office, and then they end up becoming the federal leaders and, and politicians that we have, and then subsequently even presidents. But that's where the grassroots is where all the structural, institutional 
racist policies get formulated to disenfranchise the people that are not at the table to lend their voice to it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for giving us that a very, you know, detailed experience uh, as, a, as a local leader, a school committee. And for those of you who have just joined us, uh, that was Evelyn, uh, Dr. Evelyn Abaya. Um, she works at Mass General. I forgot to ask you to introduce yourself properly because there, you hold so many titles and probably later I will ask you to do that. But you know, we're just talking about what are some of the things that drive us or have driven us to come and just learn about how to engage in uh, in politics or policy here in Massachusetts. Um, and for the benefit of those, again, who have just joined us, I'm just going to call on uh, you to at least tell us your name. And uh, if you can't talk, please type your name and where you're, you know, what town you live, just to, to give us an idea uh, of who, where you're coming from and uh, what possibly who would be uh, running in your area so that uh, we are more uh, we are more helpful that way. So um, I would like to, if is African descent, that's what your phone says, African descent, Ontario. Uh, would you like to tell us who you are, please? Oh, I think they're not there. there are many of you just says iPhone, so I won't be able to tell, but Yunia or anybody who is uh, willing to tell us who they are and where they are joining from, that would be great. We can use that in the next two minutes. You can just unmute yourself and tell us. Is that Evelyn? Sylvia? <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, Evelyn, I'm calling in from Woburn, Massachusetts. Okay. Thank you for coming, Evelyn. Why did you decide? What, what interests you about politics? Uh, um... Actually, when I saw the fly the flyer, I wanted to know more about. <laughs> I'm just gonna be a new voter, so I wanted to know about how it is done, how to go about it, because I haven't voted before. <laughs> so this is my first time. So I went to know everything about everything about it. <laughs> All right, excellent. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, thanks for joining. And we have Christine, who is uh, from Rwanda originally. Christine, are you able to talk? She understands that most of us will never be afforded the grace of failing forward. Hello? <laughs> I think we lost her. All right. Um, oh, JK, welcome. Oh, you're muted. There we go. Uh, my name is Julie Kalunji. And I'm happy to come on to this Zoom. Uh, I was invited by Marina Simwe. I mean, she informed me of this meeting. And I think as a society, um, as part of the community, we need to know what's... Oh, Marina, you're muted. Marina, you're muted. And what things are out there to help uh our society in general and the community because most of the time we don't know what's out there and also politics helps us because they determine what goes to what community in terms of uh, cash flow and how like for schools they determine how schools are run uh, because I've realized like communities like Andover receive more financial benefits compared to schools like, uh, okay, different schools receive benefits depending. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, anybody else want to introduce yourselves? Lino, are you able to talk? Yeah, I, like I say, I, I think I sent you a message yesterday. Um, This is my my busy time, like my really busy, busy time. 
So and um, and I was just busy, and I was like, oh my god, I need to at least go there and, and show myself up. And uh, if I have to go back to to my duty, go back to my duty. But at least, yeah, I'm here. So I don't know what you guys have talked about already, but you know, like, like I say to you, uh, I feel like we really need to get ourselves involved because so many times we feel like if if I don't vote, it doesn't matter. But you forget that by not voting, you have voted. And you have voted no to yourself because you have given someone else to go and make a choice for you. So you sit at home and you're like, oh, that doesn't matter. It doesn't, it's, it has always been like that. No, it hasn't. You can make a change. And guys, being who we are, being the diaspora, having had what Trump is thinking about us and many, many of the same people that think in the same way as Trump, we really need to come out and start making our voices hard. Because the browning of America is threatening a lot of white people. A lot of white people, especially the evangelical white men that feel that everything should be the way they want it to be, having to think about what they did before and what they are doing to other people, they are so scared and they will do anything and everything to make sure that we don't be allowed to participate. So whether you have just a green card, you can't vote though, or you are a citizen, you have to go vote. But once you live under this country, you live in this country, whether you believe me, even when you don't have the papers, you still live here. Something is going to affect you. So talk to your friend, someone who can vote, at least urge them to go and vote. But please, please, please don't stay home because when you stay home, you have asked me, you have asked Vivian to go and vote for you and they may not vote in your interest. That's fantastic. Thank you for that introductory remark, uh, Lino. I, we couldn't agree with you any less. You have done uh, you know, a phenomenal job of just describing some of the threats we that are facing us. I loved your phrase, the browning of America is threatening white people. Uh, that's, you know, a very simple way of explaining, you know, some of the challenges we face with uh, discriminative tendencies and all that. And it can only be, you know, it can, one of the biggest ways to address those is through voting. And what you said, by not voting, you have voted. This is There's so many things I could pick up from what you just said, but I'd like to hear from Robert Chigundu. Are you, st are you here? Can you talk? Um, I think he might, he- oh. Yeah, sorry, sorry. I'm in a very noisy place, I'm working. That's okay. But but uh, yeah, I just jumped on here. Sorry, this is my first time. I this was link was shared by Afande Momo, uh, Maureen Karemba, the president of the Uganda Boston Association. I know uh, based on what I just heard from what the previous speaker said, I can uh, easily relate and connect to what you guys are talking about, which is we gotta get involved as the diaspora in the US politics, right? Because we often get preoccupied by worrying about politics back home on the continent, back home on the motherland, and we forget that if we do not engage here, if we do not exercise our power here, if we do not become powerful here where we live, it's gonna be very difficult for us to even have a bigger impact, or an impact that we desire back on the African continent. So it is very important if we get the right leadership here in the US to get involved, not only by voting after, by running for some of these offices. Okay, I think uh, it's very important. So uh, I like the subject. I'll continue listening while I'm working. Thank you very much. 
All right, before you go, Robert, I just want to have one follow up question. What are some of the things that you think are keeping us as are you African diaspora, Ugandan diaspora from engaging in? Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, we don't even know that we are powerful. We, we, preoccupy, we, we worry about the problems back home. That is preoccupying us. So we, we tend not to buy, get bothered or pay attention to the politics here. We are always in transition. We are thinking about back home, realizing that we are here. We have the power now. Some of us who are becoming a citizen, the things that are, uh, are being discussed and the things that are being made impact us will help us overcome. But let us also, in other words, let us think about both. You know, if you tell a Ugandan not to worry about Ugandan politics, you'll be like, go or somebody gave you money or something. But uh, I think let us try to do both, at least. That's what I would say. Because the preoccupation with Ugandan politics is prohibiting us from engaging here where we live. Thank you so much. Very powerful words indeed. And there's somebody whose phone uh, it just says iPhone. Would you please unmute yourself and at least say hello, introduce yourself? I can't tell who it is. Oh, uh, okay. I, I, I don't know whether they can hear us, but this is fantastic. And uh, someone is joining us. Grace will let them settle in, and then uh, we'll ask them to introduce themselves. But based on, uh, <laughs> yep. Did I? Is Grace's iPhone? Would you please say introduce yourself and tell us why you're interested in politics and policy? Um, my name is Grace. Um. I'm a citizen, but right now I'm out of the country. I'll be back in two weeks, but uh, I'm interested in politics. I love freedom. I love independence. I love equality. I love to vote for the people who care for everyone. That's why I'm here. And uh, just a quick follow up. Uh, for the time you have been here in Massachusetts, um, what are some of the challenges you think or you either you have experienced or that you see are keeping our people from engaging in politics and policy? Um, I think it's um, sometimes it's especially I would say for the immigrants, they work so hard, they are always busy. They're interested, very interested, but they don't get enough time to get involved. And because they people work, a, a, you know, a, a number of jobs, they don't only work on one job. So they are always all over the place working. They are tired. So they get lazy. They, they are tired and they think it doesn't really matter. But I think we need that um, acknowledgement and information and, uh, you know, to let everyone know that it matters. Absolutely. No, thank you. Yeah, that awareness is very important. Yes. That it really matters. Your vote matters because it says a lot about how you are going to live in this country you came to live in. Absolutely. Yes, Leno, you wanted to add something. Yeah, for just just to touch on what the previous speaker has just said and Mr. Chigun. The thing is, we are we we still look at ourselves as immigrants and like Shukun was saying we we are so so much caught up with what is going on back home and most of the time we can't make a lot of change to what is going on back home and we forget when we think where we live now where we are now it's for other people to to make decisions and then we forget that we too have got the power to make decisions according to what is in our interest. And for what she just said, being uh, working so much, that that's a big hindrance. But again, if we don't get involved, we can't even change that. We will always be working that hard and not getting anywhere. So we we have to figure out we have to find a way of getting involved in trying to make changes so that we also can start enjoying the things that uh, 
uh, others are enjoying here and not having to work that hard. Because believe me, we get asked so many questions. Yeah, I mean, a lot. Of, one question a lot of times: How do when you are going to work? How do you do it? I I've heard that from my fellow workers. You know what I mean? How do you do it? And I'm thinking to myself, you just need to step in my shoes and know how I do it because they can't do it the way we do it. But if we don't make change, then we we'll always do it that way. And it's it's really, it can really take a toll on ourselves. So we need to have our mindset and the things that are what, what we are looking at from back home, we kind of need to start transitioning from there because honestly how many of us go back there to enjoy the things that are happening there not until when we are either way too old or when we are in a casket so mm. so i have yeah. to agree with with lino that i think i was going to say the same thing that the only way that we can start to appreciate how these why, how, why civic involvement is important is to change the mindset and to know that we're here, this is our home. And to his point, when are we ever, we, most of us have kids here, we're raising children here. By the time we retire 60 something and go back, chances are we may never go back to Africa full time. So if you're in an environment where you're gonna live the rest of your life or most of your life, it is important that we change that mindset. I think we come here and we say, oh, in three years, I'm gonna go back. And then that three years goes to five years, five years go to 10 years, 10 years go to 15 years. Before you know, you're 50 years here and we haven't engaged in any way. And all of us always come, oh, when I come, oh, three years, I'm going back. At least I said that 35 years later, I'm still here. And then because we don't get engaged, we let people who don't know us, who don't understand our needs formulate policies that affect us. And sometimes it's not even intentional. It's just that they don't even know enough to formulate the policies to support our well being. And so I know we're all busy. I did not have time to be on school committee. I'll tell you, it wasn't the easiest thing that I ever did. Um, Vivian lives in my committee and knew how much discrimination and Zoom bombing I got. But it was important that I sat there and I would have wished that I handed the baton over to another person, another immigrant that understood our cause. And I worry every day that the policies that I work so hard to put in place, that somebody can just undo those policies. But I cannot be on the school committee forever. But I think we're all saying the same thing that we, I think at least those of us on this Zoom understand that civic engagement one is important. And that it's important that we change our mindset to get involved. And even that means just even joining your town meeting. There are towns that have town meeting, right? It's just being on there and be able to vote for the right policies. Planning committee, cultural committee, um, school committee, any little thing that you can get advertising that you can join, we should make it or encourage other people to do because that's where the conversations happen. That's where the policies get made. That's where things are entrenched and our kids and ourselves do not get to benefit. And, you know, recently in my in my town, we had a police um, training, sort of like DOG gives this community policing training. And the only reason why we thought about that was because I was involved. My husband has been discriminated against by the police of Boxborough. And so when the new chief came and I had made formal complaints about it, when he came in, he said, how can I police in a more inclusive way that everybody in Boxborough is feeling included and respected by our police? And so this went to the DOG and they funded the training and I helped him to pull the training together and to think about how can we, when police gets called to our homes, for whatever reason, you know, how do they approach it with respect? When I was on the school committee, a woman came to attack me. And when I called the police, the police told me that, and I said, well, I felt like my life was threatened. 
The police said, well, if you think somebody is going to kill you in this neighborhood, you must as well tell me that a UFO landed on your roof. I felt that was disrespectful. And I made a formal complaint to my chief. So without some of these actions, and I did that not because I felt like he will come back and harm me or he, I would experience this again, but I did not want any person of color in my community to ever have to encounter this idiot of a police who will speak down to me because he sees my the color of my skin as black. And so we all we just need to, I think we're all saying the same thing, but we need to encourage everyone to be civically engaged. And it doesn't always mean that you have to run for office, but there are there's so many opportunities in our town halls. There's so many pathways to civic engagement that we can all lend our efforts in, that we know what is going on. We can educate our community about what is going on. There's so many opportunities that come that we don't even know about, whether it's um, insulating your home, or there's so many things because we are not engaged. We don't always know. They come, the white people take them and we don't even know. 40B housing. Some of us, there's so many Africans and immigrants that could benefit from 40B housing, but we don't even hear about it because we are not civically engaged. And when they come, the white people benefit. In my community, for instance, the 1240B homes, all of them are white people. And if you're talking about homes that are million dollars, seven, eight to nine hundred thousand dollars, and twelve of those are forty B homes, you can see what they're sitting on. But we don't always know about it. So, no, that is a very excellent thing that you've pointed out. The forty B housing—that's just one of the of the areas that of the blind spots that African diaspora are, are in the diaspora community because that's just one of them. There are so many uh, rebates on. Uh, on you know renewable energy initiatives and you know so many programs and subsidies that are given to our residents but we don't know as african diaspora because again like evelyn rightly said we are not engaged so which is a great segue into the next question like how can we best get engaged because um first of all we have upcoming elections and that was one of what inspired this zoom in the first place I, I don't know how many of us on this Zoom are even registered to vote or can vote. And you can just put a thumbs up. And I, I ask that because many of our people don't know how to vote. And the best place to get information on how to register to vote is on the, the Secretary of State's website. Uh, there is, it's a very easy process. You just have to be eligible. To be eligible, you have to be a US uh U.S. citizen, but there are other ways to get engaged. Uh, and uh, for local <coughs> elections, you can also be a permanent resident to engage in that with that. So you don't have to be a citizen for that part. And uh, I, I don't, probably we will not, I'll have a separate video to show how to access the information on how to register to vote. I want to keep this Zoom, uh, you know, within the hour just to respect people's time. But I wanted to take the opportunity for a Q&A. We have uh, Evelyn Abaya here who has run for office here. So if you have any questions, and I know Lino, you, we, we were talking about some, how to fundraise, how to donate. Uh, if you have any similar questions to that, you know, just ask them or turn off your mic and ask or put it in the chat. And then, uh, <laughs> so that we have an opportunity to answer some of your questions. Vicky, I know you- uh, I have a question. Yes, Grace. Grace, Grace. So one, I just wanted to answer what you said, how can we make people engaged? Uh, most immigrants uh, go to churches, that I know for sure. And actually before you asked, I, I just wanted to ask for it that, can we find a way of going to these churches and uh, give people some awareness, some sensitization about voting and why they should vote because they need to be sensitized and to be given this awareness. Uh, but it is most, it can mostly be done in churches in our community, the immigrant citizens. It can best be done in the mosques and, and, and the churches. That's the best target. Uh, you can always go to, we have the, for the Ugandan community, for example, they have uh, an organization, if they have offices in Waltham, 
we have leaders. Most of these communities have leaders. If you reach them, I'm sure we can get that access to the churches and the mosques. The second thing you mentioned, the green card holders. I didn't know they can vote. Can they vote? Oh, no, they can't. They can't. If they you can't. Are citizen, I think, yeah. if no, you are green card holders cannot don't, vote. Don't, yeah, don't, don't try. You will get in trouble. Okay. No, no, what I just think, wanted to be clear about it because she said something about it. Yeah. I think what Vivian was trying to allude to is that you don't necessarily have to be a citizen to be able to engage civically. There oh, right, 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 yes. For non citizens okay. to engage within your town, within the local level, there's so many opportunities to engage other than the voting. Voting is important, but also okay. the avenues that we who are not citizens could be able to engage to move some of this agenda forward. Okay, yes. I wanted to know about that too. How can we help? Where can we help? We, we are interested because we want this to happen and we need to know how we can help, how we can get engaged in like when, helping. When, when you hold a, a green card, you are a resident and in your area, in your local area, and in the local, uh, in, in the local uh, elections, Anything that doesn't have to do with um, with federal, you you can get engaged and you can you can be part of that. You can be on a committee or anything like that. But when it comes to federal voting, like voting for a president, <laughs> well, um, uh, you cannot because that way it can get you in trouble. Oh if sure, you, yeah, sure. But even as a citizen, how do I get on these committees to? to, you know, to help in, you know, any area I can help? Usually in your town, there are mm -hmm. um, different sort of committees and they typically would advertise them on the town website. The only reason why mm -hmm. I got to know that there was a seat open in the school committee was because I was actually looking to join the health committee of my town. And when I went to look at the mm -hmm. different committees, I looked at the opening and then also just talking to people in town who are civically engaged and saying, well, I want to get involved. How can I get involved? I did a lot of that. How can I lend my help? How can I help to make a change? So there's so many ways to find out, particularly when you go to the town website and you look at the different committees, they will tell you somebody's term is from this term to this term, from that term to that term. And sometimes people don't want to renew because they've been in there for so long. And as you talk to the town clerk or whatever and say, well, I want to engage. Is there whenever there's an opening, let me know. Or how do you publicize these things? Some, sometimes they send these things to our homes and we look at them as junk mail. We just throw them away. Okay. Absolutely. Thank yeah. It, it, sorry, Grace. And again, I, I have to correct if I misspoke because maybe I was talking too fast and insinuated you can vote as a permanent resident. No, you cannot. So yes, this is the voting uh, criteria on the screen. You have to be a US citizen, a resident of Massachusetts if you live here, 18 years or older, and not currently incarcerated by reason of a felony or conviction. Or conviction. So you can okay. do that by mail uh, the or online uh, or in person. But uh, yeah, in addition to what uh, Evelyn has said, I also, when I moved here, the in, within the first, year or maybe two years, I decided to serve on a committee that I was passionate about, which was culture. I'm like, oh, culture. I want to, tell, to share about Africa. So I joined a cultural council, you know, and through that, I got to know that they award. They are, this council awards money to people who have projects in culture. And I would never have known. And to my surprise, there were no African groups receiving that money. And uh, so, but through mm. that, I learned that those are some of the opportunities. And we have so many cultural groups in our diaspora communities, but they're not benefiting from things like this because we are not engaged at that level. Mm. Uh, and uh, that's one way. And then in terms of supporting and engaging with campaigns right now, look up for, you know, you can go to your town website or the district uh, website to find out who is running for office and then research 
for example, I just pulled this out for Massachusetts, uh, the Democratic primary ballot, uh, a sample. So you can research who the candidates are, go to their campaign websites, see if you believe in their platforms, and then work with them to, you know, they have volunteer opportunities. And don't go by yourself, take your children, because we are not doing this for just ourselves. Our children, this is their home, this is a place they know. <laughs> So if we if we did this, uh, we you know paid attention to who is running in depending on your town. When you go to the state uh, website, you it will prompt you uh, the Massachusetts website. It will prompt you to you know if you want to uh, update any voter registration information or or even know where you are, you just put in your address and it will populate you know a, a kind of a sample ballot of where, what, who is running in your town, and then make sure that you learn about that, I'll contact them, email them, and get involved. That way they know about you, but you also know about the process. And later, when you have issues to advocate for, you have contacts. And that's how we build a network and build engagement with these places. And then for those who can vote, make sure that you go to your town clerk's office, and uh, you know know where you're going to vote. You can do this research before election day because election day might be too busy with work and you just want, you want to rush either from work or to work straight to your precinct. So do this this week, do some research, go to, for, I pulled this up for Acton, you put in the, you know, where you live and the map will show you where you go to, or what precinct you go to vote in. And it makes life easier. And of course, later for the congressional districts, this information you can find at the Secretary of uh, uh, State's website. Again, uh, it shows, you, depending on where you live in Massachusetts, you will know what congressional district you are and who, which Congress person is running in that district so that you can engage with them. And these are the ones now that deal with federal issues. Immigration, you know, for us diaspora, we, are, we have many, immigration related challenges. Now that you, it's very, very important to pay attention to these congressional races or congressional leaders and find ways to engage with them so that we can advocate for our immigrants and uh, you know advocate for our immigration processes at that level. So that's just some of the, uh, some of the issues that, uh, ways that we can engage or how find information about who is running and who, where to find, to understand, how to learn about the platforms. So uh, <laughs> I know I've, that's quite a mouthful. This is probably good for like another session, but that's a, a quick overview of uh, of the process. So um, thank you. <laughs> the other thing that I just wanted to add to all of what you said is that there's also early voting. I know we're busy. So there's opportunity to, if you're a citizen to vote early, um, one thing that I do personally is I have two kids that are 18 and above. One is 21 and the other one is 22. What I actually do is because their home is our home, I request their ballots ahead of time so they can vote so they don't miss voting. So if you have mm -hmm. kids that are citizens, make sure that they're voting. Just just so you know, I've already even did my voting. I, uh, I did my ballot already. It's, it's already in. <laughs> Thank you, Linda. Way to go. <laughs> but it's been really, really a pleasure uh, chatting with everyone here today. Thank you for joining this info session. This is going to be one of many, hopefully. And if you have any questions, you can write to me, Vivian at VivianBirchall.com. Vivian at VivianBirchall.com. But for now, make sure you get up, vote, register to vote. Look for candidates, canvas, volunteer, and make sure that our voices are heard as African diaspora. Thank you for joining. Till next time. Mm -hmm.